here's an improper integral uh, because notice that what happens as x goes to 0, natural log of x goes to negative infinity. So this is an improper integral of the second type. Uh, of course, plugging in e doesn't really do anything terrible there. But uh, I'm going to take the limit as a goes to 0 from the positive side of the integral from a to e, x, natural log of x, dx. Hmm, now this is, this is a finite integral, so I, I should be able to integrate it. Uh, I don't really know how to integrate it as one piece. Now, I don't really have a function inside a function, so <clears throat> I guess I'm going to try integration by parts. Uh, let's see. My u, uh, I want to be something that when I take the derivative gets simpler. How about natural log of x? Natural log is always a great, great candidate for uh, u. That makes my dv equal to x dx. So my v is 1 half x squared. My du is 1 over x dx. And what I get here is I get the limit as a goes to 0 from the positive side of the whole quantity, let's see, uv, so that's 1 half x squared natural log of x evaluated from a to e minus the integral from a to e of v du, so what's that? That's 1 half, then I have x squared times 1 over x, which just gives me x dx. Keep that limit outside until you've simplified the innards as much as possible. So what do I have here? I have 1 half x squared natural log of x evaluated from a to e, but then here I have 1 fourth x squared evaluated from a to e, so I'll just put the evaluation from a to e on the outside for the entire piece. Hold my limit outside just one step farther till I can evaluate. Plugging in e, I get, let's see, e squared over 2 times natural log of e, which is 1, minus, let's see what I have here, a squared over 2 times the natural log of a. Hmm, that's a little tricky. Then this term right here, negative e squared over 4. And then uh, what do I have here? I have positive a squared over 4. Sound good? So uh, what happened there? Well, I can, I suppose I can combine these two things since I have so much in common and this is a finite number as long as a is finite it's perfectly fair to combine these uh, so a is a finite number before I've applied the limit so e, uh, one half e minus a quarter e is e fourths right? uh, then what do I have here I have say um, Let me do positive one fourth uh, a squared times, let's see, what do I have here? I have negative two natural log of a plus one. Okay, so. The big question is, what happens to this as a goes to infinity? Well, that is a great question. So, the problem is, this is an indeterminate form for a limit, right? As a goes to zero, a squared, of course, goes to zero. And as a goes to zero here, this is going to go to positive infinity, right? Negative two natural log of zero. So, hmm, what exactly are we going to do with that behemoth? Well, 
The answer is we're going to apply Hopital's because it's an indeterminate form, right? So um, let's see. Let me let me actually set it up once before. I'll bring out the e to the fourth e e squared. I'm sorry, over four, and then I've got. Uh, let's see the limit as a goes to zero from the positive side of if I make this um, oh, 1 minus 2 natural log of a in the numerator and then let's say 4 over a squared now it's in the indeterminate form infinity over infinity right so now I can apply Hopital's in the classic method, e squared over 4, plus the derivative of the numerator, <sighs> okay, that has a constant derivative, this has a negative 2 over a, and then the derivative of the denominator, this is basically 4 a to the negative 2, which gets me negative 8, a to the negative 3, okay? Let me see if I can't simplify that down just a little bit. e squared over 4 plus the limit as a goes to 0 in the positive direction. Uh, let's multiply this times a to the third over a to the third. Those will cancel, of course. I'll get a 1 fourth out in front here, and I get an a squared there. Now the limit as a squared as a goes to zero of a squared is of course zero. So I get e squared over four and the limit converges.